Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to begin studying compound data. Now, you may have noticed that we're getting pretty good at dealing with data that represents information like the height of a firework, or the color of a light, or the name of a city, or the position of a cat, or, all, or things like that. But what about data like a person's name? A person's name has a first and last name. Or a magic wand. You may know or may not know that a magic wand has three properties. The wood it's made of, the core material, and the length. Both of these are examples of what we call compound data. Data where the value that we're interested in is really made up of two or more other values. In order to learn about compound data, we're going to need three additions to our tool set so far. We're going to need a new mechanism called define struct. We're going to need a new how to design data definitions rule. And we're going to need a new template rule. So let's start with the define struct mechanism. And then we'll go on to designing complete data definitions for compound data. Here we go. Let's look at des define struct. And let's do it for the case of the magic wand that has three properties, its wood, its core, and its length. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write define struct wand and another open paren wood, core, and length. Now let's talk about what that means. Well, this define struct defines a number of definitions. In this define struct, we say that the wand, this part here, is the structure name. And the field names are wood, core, and length. So everything in these parens are the field names, and this is the structure name. Now this structure definition automatically defines a number of other functions. It defines a function called the constructor. which is make wand. And what that means is we can say something like define some name, make wand, and we'll just make a, a wand here. So there's a wand the wood is going to be U, the core is going to be Phoenix Feather, and the length is going to be 13.5, whatever that means. We'll talk about how to interpret this data later. Okay. So the constructor lets me make wands, and I call the constructor with however many arguments there are in the wand structure definition. There's also some selectors. In this case, the selectors are wand-wood, wand-core, and wand-length. The name of the selectors always come from taking the structure name, adding a dash, and then appending each of the field names. So it's wand-wood is the first one, wand-core is the second one, and wand-length is the third one. So those are the selectors. What's important about the selectors is if I have a value which is a wand, if I have a value that's produced by make wand, then I can say something like wand dash wood of for example TRW. And let me run this program now. And we'll see what happens. Wand dash wood selects the value of the wood field out of this particular wand TRW. And similarly I could say for example wand dash length of TRW and I would get the wand's length. So that's how the selectors work. The way to think about it is that the constructor takes multiple values and packages them up in a single value. The selectors then take that single value and get the individual values back out of it. There's also something called the structure predicate, which in this case is called wand question mark. 
And if I say one question mark of something that is a one, TRW, that will produce true. Whereas if I said one dash question mark of say 32, which is not a wand, that will produce false. Let's run it just to be sure. So we define TRW to be a wand. Wand dash wood of TRW produces U because that's what we supplied as the wood field of TRW. Wand dash length of TRW produces 13.5 because that's what we supplied as the length field of TRW. And the structure predicate wand question mark produces true if we call it with TRW, or I should say the value of TRW, uh, and it produces false if we call it with 32. So there we go, that's the basic mechanism. Before you go any farther, I'd like to ask you to do this short exercise. So do these review problems. What you should do now is stop the tape and write down your answer to the problems. And then you can resume the tape to check your results. Okay, here are my answers to the review problems. So we're given a defined struct where the structure name is box and the fields are length, height, and width. So the structure name is box, that comes from here. The fields are called length, height, and width, that comes from here. The constructor is make box because the constructor is always called make dash and then the structure name. The selectors are box length, box height, and box width because the selectors are always the structure name, a dash, and then the name of each of the fields. And the predicate is box question mark because the predicate is always called the structure name followed by a question mark. So if we want these constant definitions to so that B1 and B2 name two different boxes, well here's a box. Make box 2, 3, 4 is a box of length 2, height 3, and width 4. And make box 12, 13, and 26 is a box of length 12, height 13, and width 26. And now if we ask to write an expression to compute the volume of B1, the length times the height times the width, well the way we get the length of B1 is we say box length of B1. And the way we get the height of B1 is we say box height of B1. And the way we get the width of B1 is we say box width of B1. And if we just multiply all those together, then we'll get the volume of the box. Okay, so that's the defined struct mechanism. We have a new definition, define struct, that allows us to find structures like wand that have multiple fields. It defines a constructor, like make wand, that takes multiple values, one for each field, and makes a single value out of it, a single compound value out of it. And then the selectors fetch the individual values out of the single compound value so that we can get them back. And define struct also defines a predicate for each structure that test whether a value is one of those structures. So that's the define struct mechanism. And next we'll have to learn how to use it to make compound data definitions.